بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصل على رسوله الكريم أما بعد لا تقوم الساعة حتى يخرج أحدكم من أهله قيامة والنات كم أنت يوليف يوم فيخبره أصاه بما أحدث أهله بعده يعصى will inform you of all the occurrences that is taking place at home. A asa is a stick, a thing which you hold in your hands all the time. One possible meaning is the cell phone. Taking this riwayat, the riwayat and the ahadith that were mentioned previously, combining all of this here, we can safely translate Kiyama won't come until evil will bombard you, until you will be inundated with evil, evil propaganda via satellites, cables, antennas, using instruments like cell phones, laptops, TVs, computers, which will darken, blacken your hearts where you will have no inclination to good, nor be able to differentiate good from evil, and infect your hearts so that you become attracted to sin and ma'asiyat. If today we cannot see the reality of what Janabi Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has foretold, then there's no blinder person on earth than a one that cannot see these realities. If there was ever a time a person had to make a decision to boycott all these evils to protect ourselves, our spouses, our family, our children, children our progeny, then now is the time. Protecting our dunya, protecting our akhirat, protecting our honor, protecting our reputation, giving us peace of mind, happiness and sanity, then now's the time. Anything that's left gets worse. Termites, if we don't tackle the problem, then eventually the entire structure, the entire building, everything collapses. Like that one domino that falls, drops everything. In front of a person, these things would unfold. If we have to really understand the gravity of what Janabi Rasulullah Wasallam has informed us, then we can safely say, worse than any gangrene that will necessitate amputation of important body parts is thus darkness, worse than any cancer that becomes malignant and uncontrolled, are these instruments of darkness, worse than any virus or disease that infects and plagues the body, are these instruments worse than any poison that can paralyze and immobilize a person are these instruments worse than any atomic bomb, any nuclear bomb that will incinerate everything in its path are these instruments worse than any tsunami that will come that will decimate everything in front of it are these instruments worse than any volcanic eruption that will annihilate everything in its path? Are these instruments worse than any hurricane that will obliterate everything in front of it? Are these instruments worse than any tornado that will demolish everything in front of it? Are these instruments worse than any person that's captive and is caught by a torturer and is in a torture chamber? Are these instruments, when will the reality and the haqiqat come into our hearts? We need to cry, we need to try, we need to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ask Allah to protect us, ask Allah to give us the guidance how to combat all these fitan, all these trials, ma dhahra min, 
وَمَا بَطَن What we can see apparently and what is not visible we need to ask Allah to teach us how to combat these trials and fitten if a person wants their child to become a rebel to become a victim of drugs, violence, alcohol become a victim of immorality, indecency become brazen on ma'asiyat and disobedience where a child will beat his own parents we should not be gullible and say my child is an angel my child is protected we need to take the means we cannot give them access to these instruments of destruction and annihilation and expect them to grow up with the fear and the taqwa and the sifat of the people of Iman this is complete destruction as parents we need to take steps necessary to secure the akhirah and saying I trust my daughter and I trust my son or saying that we shouldn't be too hard we shouldn't be too stringent on them this is the era of freedom then forget our children even in our houses between spouses there's a complete breakdown of marriages homes have become a battlefield where the wife or husband dreads coming home with that home that is a battlefield that is filled with arguments and fighting and turmoil there's no peace in that house the husband is cheating on the wife the wife is cheating on the husband there's no akhlaq there's no good character there's no mizaj and temperament of deen where you will sacrifice your rights for the benefit of others but where morality has become the a thing of the past where open flagrant violations of Allah's commandments blatant violations of the awamir of Allah that that very house which supposed to be a sanctuary has become a hell because these sons these ma'asi these disobediences takes a person to Jahannam forget Jahannam in Akhirat now Jahannam has come in our houses where this ummah should have been glued to the tilawat of Quran and glued to the musalla we are glued to these instruments and if people are saying that don't be so radical don't be so extreme then go and speak to people who are witnessing exactly what is being said let us go one generation back where a boy would find it almost impossible he had to build courage it would take him weeks just to speak to a girl forget going to the girl's house forty years ago thirty years ago ask the people that were around what type of fitan what type of uh, ma'asi was prevalent the statistic that was mentioned recently is is a drop in an ocean of what disobedience what snowballing is in front of us what possible escalation this is a proliferation of sin beyond our comprehension infidelity adultery disloyalty beyond our imagination and we mention stories just for us to understand that it is happening outside otherwise this is not the platform but for a person to realize that these things are out there and I have to hold on to the rope of Allah and his Rasul and if I abandon this rope I my family, my progeny, generations are at risk. There was a story of a Muslim girl. 
She had written a suicide note and was planning to commit suicide. Taqdeer had it that his sister, her sister found that letter. She panicked, she didn't know what to do. She realized the only option is let me confide to my mother and let her in, see what she can do. She informed the mother, the mother was shocked as well. She said, let's maybe take her to a psychologist. We were not able to identify the problem properly, unlike her speaking to a third party. So here's a girl, an innocent, pure, chaste girl that has grown up in a relatively religious background. After going to the psychologist, it comes apparent that this girl wants to become suicidal and wants to commit suicide because through the internet she had gotten contact with another boy. Eventually she had become intimate with him and whether it was through the WhatsApp chats she sent pictures or at the time when he was intimate with her. Very intimate pictures, disastrous pictures, which her modesty was breached, was posted on a platform which was created by a group of Muslim youngsters who go out, who have a platform for youth to go out to a hunt for girls and then get them in a compromising position and take a picture. And that picture is uploaded onto this platform. And then these pictures are ranked and these boys are given a ranking. Previously we discussed the harms of Taswir. It's, it's, it cannot be described, I cannot go into. The harms are so great. The risks and the compromise and the consequences are so great. Words cannot describe how disastrous, disastrous it can be. So her picture was placed on this group. That boy was ranked. And just by the way, can you imagine the boys that are going out and committing this sin? What type of husbands, what type of men, what type of fathers they would become in the future? Anyway, somebody on that group recognized her. So he contacted her and blackmailed her. And she gave him whatever funds she had. She started borrowing from her friends. Eventually she could not borrow enough. And it came to a position where he said, I'm going to publicly release these photos. So she decided her only option was to commit suicide. We do not have a clue of the devastation. This is clear. Janab Rasulullah sallam, has spelled it out. Layluha. The night is night, darkness is dark. The night, the day is day, it's clear as day, it could be seen. It's vivid, it's visible, it's in front of us. There's, there's, there's not more I can explain or get into. So we need to make a lot of dua, turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Infidelity and all of these things have become so common. There was a joke, not munasib to mention it, but just to understand how how the mindset of people have become. A husband or a couple had four sons, three sons were handsome, faint complexion, blue-eyed, one son dark in complexion, not resembling the other three. 
He's on his deathbed. The husband says, Dear, I need a confession from you. Can you explain to me? Just be honest to me that the last son, is he my son? So the wife was panicking because he was asking a question. So she said, I can safely say with a clean heart that that is your son. So her friend who met her later on said that what was the conversation before your husband passed away? I seen you were very stressed. She said, fortunately, he asked about the first son, which I gave him a correct answer. Fortunately, he never asked about the other three sons. Thus is the life of the people of Batil, the people who have had made animals their imams, the Ummah of Janabi Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who are supposed to be the Imams of this Ummah, what has happened to them? Continuing with the Bab of Tawbah and Istighfar, in min qibalil maghribi, in the direction of the West, Lababan Masira to Ardihi Arbauna Amen, it is a distance, it is wide, 40 years, one rewired, 70 years. فَتَحُوا اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلِّ التَّوْبَةِ From the time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created it, Allah created this door of tawbah and repentance. فَلَا يُغْلِقُهُ حَتَّى تَتْلُعَ الشَّمْسُ مِنْهُ Until the sun does not rise from the west, this door will be open. لِلْجَنَّةِ ثَمَانِيَةُ أَبْوَابِ Jannat has eight doors, Sab'atun Mughlaqatun, seven doors are closed. Wababun Maftuhun Litoba. One door has been dedicated for those who make Toba and repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Amal we done last was hundred times morning and evening, third kalima. We did hundred times morning and evening istighfar. Now after Fajr and Maghrib Salat immediately to read La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu lahul mulku wa lahul hamdu yuhi wa yumid wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir to recite this ten times morning and evening immediately without moving from the spot where we read our Salat كتب الله له أشر حسنات Ten rewards are written, وَمَحَا عَنْهُ أَشْرَ السَّيِّئَاتِ Ten sins are forgiven, وَرَفْعَ لَهُ أَشْرَ الدَّرَجَاتِ Ten stages are elevated, وَكَانَ يَوْمَهُ ذَلِكَ كُلَّهُ فِي حِرْزٍ مِنْ كُلِّ مَكْرُو And from that time till sunset, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deputes farishtas, to protect that person from any calamities. When we read in this, we should have yaqeen that this is the words of my Nabi. وَحُرِسَ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ Likewise, Allah appoints angels to protect him from shaitan. وَلَمْ يَنْبَغِي لِذَنْبٍ أَيْ يُدْرِكَهُ فِي ذَلِكَ الْيَوْمِ Besides ascribing partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah places a special protection that he does not commit serious, severe gunas that will be disastrous to his akhirah. وَكَانَ لَهُ بِكُلِّ وَاحِدَةٍ قَالَهَا إِتْقُ رَقَبَةٍ مُؤْمِنَةٍ And you will get the reward of freeing ten slaves in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانَا أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ